Um, great. Well, welcome everybody. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I don't know. Yeah, is that good? Um, I've got a talk here about migrating to Drupal 8. It's not going to be a highly technical talk, so if you're looking for a highly technical talk, um, but what I'm hoping to do is point us to some resources and tools that will ease your journey. So we're not doing a lot of technical stuff here, um, but it will be a beginning point so that, um, and in fact, the way I, I want to finish the talk is more like, instead of a QA, and a more like a birds of a feather where we sort of say we're all on this journey trying to work out how we get to Drupal 8. Um, how can we work together to make it happen, both from the developer's perspective and encouraging businesses to to begin to adopt Drupal 8? Because I think we're in this sort of catch-22 situation where developers haven't got a lot of experience and they're not getting a lot of experience because businesses aren't quite prepared to go for it. Um, a quick slide for start, just to say you could be in other great talks, and quite frankly, I wish I was in any other one than this one. Um, <laughs> uh, but if, if you're not sure you're in the right talk, this one is about migrating to Drupal 8. Uh, there's some other really good talks there, at least a couple of which I would have liked to have gone to. Uh, a little bit about me, which seems to be essential. Um, when we do these talks, uh, I've I'm a freelancer, contractor, um, I've worked in enterprise level stuff for a few years. Um, some of you, or quite a few of you may know me through uh, various companies, digital agencies I've worked with as well. Um, I've been doing Drupal since 2008, around the time when Drupal 5 was changing to Drupal 6, so I've never really built with Drupal 5, but um, I was at least vaguely familiar with it, but really I've worked with Drupal 6, Drupal 7, and now hopefully a little bit of Drupal 8 coming up. Um, I've been a web developer since 1999 when we had the sort of big boom before everything crashed. Um, so that was probably my fault as well. Um, and, but I've been developing, uh, I mean, I started my career in um, when we were the Stone Age way back. So, you know, I've been doing C, C, um, Java development before that. Um, also quite an active member of the community, so many of you may or many of you will know me through various Drupal cons, camps, meetups and things like that. Uh, this is one of my favourite pictures because um, I like to be the centre of attention and as if anyone was in Prague in 2013 at Drupal con they will know that most of the audience here are pointing directly at me. <laughs> Because I'm back there. A few people quite close to me got it wrong and they thought Dries was the centre of attention, but um, <laughs> I, I'm somewhere in the middle of that anyway. <laughs> um, if we needed a bit of motivation to, to think why do we need to get onto Drupal 8, then if we're still on Drupal 6, um, quite, literally in the last week or so, we will have, if you sort of look at your um, current updates required for your Drupal 6 site, um, it's the first time I've ever seen a screen go quite like this, but suddenly on the 24th of February, um, the required, uh, basically everything went unsupported. Drupal 6 is now officially unsupported, um, so you get an entire red screen, and that should have frightened a few people if they've still got Drupal 6 sites up and running. Um, that should be good enough motivation. Um, at the same time, uh, the security team were good enough to release critical core um, security issues and on the day when I first saw this it wasn't obvious whether they were going to patch Drupal 6. Um, in fact I assumed they weren't which is what made me really scared um, but the truth is they had been working on some of these patches for a few weeks in advance and the really good news is at least the, the critical issue here which was to do with file uploads and, and the ability to use them badly um, maliciously was um, they, they've got a patch for that, so Drupal Core was patched. Um, there were also um, patches for file... Somebody's tweeting, aren't they? <laughs> um, there's patches for Chaos Tools, patches for um, views, panels, as, as well as the file field, field was the main um, security update, but there were other updates as well. So it's good to see that even though Drupal 6 is officially no longer supported, 
there have been a few um, patches keeping it alive for a little bit longer. There's obviously enough people who care about it. Um, so the preliminaries for this, what we're starting off with is the assumption that we're working from a Drupal 6 or 7 site. Um, the, the, the migrate module in Drupal um, will happily allow you to migrate from other systems, um, but I'm not really going to go into that today. Um, I'm not going to go into it at all. Um, when we're migrating from a, a, a previous site, we would always do a survey of what we've used on our previous site in the way of contributed modules to see when they're up to date, or to see whether a new version is available. And Drupal 8 is currently in a state where there's sort of some modules, have, some of the, the most important modules have gone into Drupal 8 core, so we're in a good state from, from the perspective of those. Um, there's a sort of top 10 set of modules, most of which are fairly well down the path of being ported to Drupal 8 at this stage. There are one or two that um, sort of aren't there. Web forms is one that I've come across which everybody is shouting out for, um, and it just needs that extra work to make it happen. Um, and w as well as the contributed modules, you, you obviously need to assess the, any customization you've done in your old site and um, what you can do to, what you need to do in order to move that forwards. Um, and I'm not going to go into um, how you move forwards custom code a lot, um, although I will mention a module that's, that's a great help with that. Um, step zero is clearly to install your Drupal. Well, actually, it's not clearly because um, from the, when we went from version 6 to version 7 and prior to that, there, there were upgrade paths that tried to um, in place upgrade your entire Drupal. And um, I believe the Drupal 5 to 6 kind of worked. Drupal 6 to 7 didn't really work very well, and a lot of people expected it to work, but it there were too many problems really. Um, Drupal 7 to 8 was never planned to work in that way, so there was never a plan to say, here's my Drupal 7 site, um, I just run the update script and suddenly it will be turned into a Drupal 8 site. Um, as many of you will know, Drupal 8 has changed the foundational layer, the underlying framework to Symfony 2, and um, to be honest, Drupal 8 is it's fundamentally different in many, you know, probably half the code base has been changed since Drupal 7. Um, it's, it's the biggest step change that Drupal has ever gone through. Um, it's been five years in the making and there's good reasons for that because, you know, we've waited a long while for it, but it's, there's so much to change that um, we've learned lessons from that and in the future we won't do such big changes all in one go. Um, anything else there? Yep, so the, the final tagline there is um, there are some very powerful tools that help to make the job not necessarily easy but plausible. Um, and depending you know, what your current site is you're trying to migrate from, it, it may be relatively easy. There's probably going to be some snags, um, both in terms of at the moment certain modules are not available and there's, there's, there's going to be some things to work through um, soon. You know, the, the, I think all of this is, there's caveats to all of this. We, we would love the path to be completely smooth. It's not quite ready yet um, in some certain respects, um, but it's coming and if we all work together, we can make it happen sooner rather than later. So what are the tools of the trade? Um, many of you, I hope, will be familiar with Drush from previous versions of Drupal. And the good news is Drush is still there. Um, and everything you could do with Drush um, previously works pretty much the same. There's a few little changes, like where we used to say Drush CC all to clear the cache. We know Drush CR for cache rebuild. There, there's some changes inside Drupal 8 that um, improve the way in which caching is caching works. Um, but the essence of it is Drush is still there. You will need if you have a a server or an installation. Um, I will make all of these slides available later, by the way, and um, there's, th there's links against all of these which take you to more information. We'll follow some of these links just to, to get there, but um, there's lots of information attached to these slides. Um, so Drush is still there. 
if you've got a server or a local instance um, and you've got Drush installed globally, um, you will need to up upgrade Drush to, to Drush 8. If you've, if you've got one of the older versions of Drush that happily work with Drush 7, it's not going to work with, with Drupal 8. Um, there was a stage earlier in the Drupal 8 cycle where um, Drush 7 would work with it, but that has gone a long way as well. Um, the new kid on the block is something called Drupal Console. Um, I think I've, I've got some more details on, on these as, as we go through them, uh, so perhaps I'll move on. Um, migrate upgrade is, is um, what I'll hopefully be able to demonstrate a bit of, which is actually um, how we migrate the content from our existing sites and the module upgrader. Migrate upgrade is available for both Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 sites to bring data and configuration through to your Drupal 8 site. Um, module upgrader is about helping you to um, update existing custom functionality um, and it's again it's not the complete answer but it, it, it does some really useful stuff in, in a lot of the legwork of converting modules from, from Drupal 7 but it's only available for Drupal 7 there's been no attempt to do that for to bring custom functionality from Drupal 6 um, I've got a bit of a rough throw. Is anyone is is there a water supply anywhere by any chance? Um, I don't know if there's a something outside. Of, would you mind? Thank you. I can just tell it's going to go before we finish at this rate. Um, so Drupal console. Um, it was originally developed um, not as a replacement for Drush and. To some extent, you can use both, and, and there's an overlap between them, but they have slightly different purposes. Um, but it was originally developed simply for generating boilerplate code for um, the new Drupal 8 modules. Um, but it's been extended way beyond that, and, and now there is this, this significant overlap. I mean, in fact, I think from, from Drupal console, you can basically, um, and you, you tend to call Drupal console on the command line just as Drupal. So you, you, there's actually a command where you say Drupal, Drush, whatever. So you can run Drush commands from Drupal console and probably vice versa for all I know. It's the, the, the two are slightly competing, I think, because the Drupal console has, has been extended to cover much more. Um, but in many ways, Drupal console is the new way forward. It's based much more on, on the, the Drupal 8 approach. Um, and so I think as developers, get more used to it. Um, a lot more will be done with Drupal console rather than um, Drush if you're used to using that. Actually, can I just get a sort of show of hands of how many people are, first of all, how many people are developers versus site builders? So how many people are developers? How many people would call themselves more site builders? Okay, 50-50, a few more developers, great. Um, and how many people have, have had a chance to do something with Drupal 8? Great, plenty of movement there. How many people would like a chance to do something with Drupal 8? <laughs> Why are people not putting their hands up? <laughs> um, so, Migrate Upgrade is it's based on the Migrate module that Drupal had in, in Drupal 7 um, and it's I'm just going to click on one or two of these links I forgot to sort out my Wi-Fi before we started. Right, I'm not going to click on one or two of these links quite yet. Yeah. 
OK, back to Migrate Upgrade. Um, migrate Upgrade is um, the Migrate module, which was a contributor module for Drupal 7. Um, but part of the Drupal 8 initiative has been to bring that into core, nearly. Um, <laughs> the, 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 Migrate has been brought into core, but it's still under a category of experimental, so it's it's not completely released. Um, there's also, sorry, I need to get um, some internet access sorted out. Sorry, um, is the house internet working, or is it? Apologies for this. That might be a problem. So okay, I'll be tethering here very quickly. last year. No, it doesn't matter. We can we can check the password. City, yeah, city guest, yes. Yeah. Let's go to city guest and see. Yeah, yeah he's got that uh, password. I think it's C1 something. Yeah. Arsenal, yeah, sorry guys. Um, let's, let's change this one. Let's change the type to Let's do that. Yeah. Sorry about this, I should have sorted this out sooner. Yeah, yeah, There's sure. a very short gap between the since the keynote. Mm, yeah. Even me, I had to rush. <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, maybe we want to take a vote whether Arsenal or Spurs will win. Maybe we can talk about it tomorrow. Yes, That's not, that's not the company, yeah. See, my hotspot is there. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not going to. I think because let's go to this one. Uh, yeah, I need to. Yeah, we need to remove this. But it's not. Let's go to network preferences. Yeah, let's remove this. Oh, where is the other one? Mm, it's not there. City guest, okay. So let's. Try to click advanced and then you remove the. Uh, yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, let's just remove this. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to unlock it. Yeah, there's no. Sorry, I, I can unlock it. Yeah, yes, unlock that. Yes, unlock that for you. That's going to ask us to do that. Is that the same as your pin for your, for your card, sir? Uh, <laughs> yeah, can we can, can we try that with you? Can you can I borrow your card? <laughs> let's let's move that one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Okay, maybe we can talk about uh, Arsenal v Spurs now. That's terrible, you know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think that should adjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, thank you. Actually, what I was considering doing, um, how are we doing for time at this stage? Uh, no, we haven't got time for that. There's module upgrader um, is, is the tool that will help you to um, take custom modules from uh, Drupal 7 and um, convert them into a Drupal 8 form. Um, and if you go to the, the page, which will be linked onto the um, slides. There's a great little five minute video by Webchick uh, done at some previous conference or event, I think. Um, and it's, it's, Webchick can explain more in five minutes than I could explain in an hour. So um, I would suggest you follow it up. I, I was considering showing it, but uh, I don't think we've quite got time for that at the moment. So my great upgrade is the tool um, uh, is, is the tool for getting data from a Drupal 6 or 7 site, um, well data and configuration. And this, this is a, it's a big step up from what my great did in Drupal 7 where it was really just doing data and the configuration side of things. Um, you had to do separately. Um, one of the mistakes I made when I first tried to do some migration was I set up a Drupal 8 site and I set up my content types and I added all the fields I wanted um, and then tried to do the migrate and what I actually found was there were a whole heap of conflicts because when I ran the migration um, the, 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 um, the new 
Drupal 8 migrate actually tried to create extra fields or duplicate fields or you know, and had to rename the fields um, to prevent collisions. And so one thing to remember when you try and um, run the, the migrate upgrade is don't set up your content types and most of your configuration first. Um, the bit that I'd like to try and demo, which if it goes as well as we've gone so far, isn't going to show too much. Um, that's not a good one. see my command bar on the side. <laughs> okay, here's a local version of a nasty old Drupal 6 site that um, <coughs> I, I didn't do the design for this, but I rebuilt it in Drupal um, about a hundred years ago or something. Um, this is a Drupal 8 installation, um, and I have literally only um, done Drush DL of Drupal 8, um, and then I've downloaded one additional contributor module. Um, the migrate is the core migration functionality um, which can be applied to using to, to pulling from Drupal or can be applied to just like in Drupal 7 it can, it can be used for migrating from other systems WordPress or anything else custom you build migrate Drupal is what Drupal 7 used to call um, Drupal to Drupal migration so this is the, the new code that does the Drupal to Drupal configuration. The only thing I've added, I've um, pulled in with a uh, Drush download, is is the um, Drupal upgrade, which confusingly is actually called Migrate Upgrade as the module. So we basically have a completely clean Drupal 8 installation, um, and I'm going to just enable I only need to enable that one because it's dependent on the others, so um, this will automatically <coughs> enable the Drupal Migrate module, the, the um, Migrate Upgrade. And Migrate Upgrade is actually, it, it's a very thin user interface um, which gives you virtually no options, but just does everything for you in one long, in one, <coughs> not even very long. So we need to go to the path <coughs> upgrade. You need a key in that. That's good. Upgrade is just as interesting. But. Um, and it gives you a bit of general spiel, um, but all you really need to do is continue from there. And what it's now asking you to do is, is give the minimum information. This can be run from a Drush command as well. Um, but give the minimum information, which simply allows you to connect to the database of the old Drupal installation. Um, the way in which you access that will obviously depend where your Drupal installation is. I've got a local copy of the database here. Um, pulling from that old Drupal installation is read-only, so it's not going to touch the database there. It's not going to destroy anything. Um, it's not going to interfere with it or add any log tables or anything to the old site, so it's it's safe as far as that's concerned. Um, I've got to, so I enter the host. It's MySQL. Um, I enter the host um, database name, um, which if we're going to if we're going to try and pull the data from this site, um, it's called mysteries. 
Um, just to prove my security on here, I'm using the root login with no password. Uh, even the rot. <laughs> um, glasses are for a purpose, aren't they? Um, this was actually a multi-site on Drupal 6, so I do have a... prefix on this. And then this final bit is in order to allow Migrate to get hold of the files, um, you can either pull them from the local, if, if you've got private files you only have one option, you have to pull them from a local um, file folder. Um, but if you've got um, if you haven't got any private files, you can actually pull them from a, a site out there on the internet somewhere. But as we know, that's even more unreliable. So, the theory is that, that should pull them from the files folder of that Roman Mysteries site. Uh, first step after this is to review, um, and this is probably one of the most interesting pages. Um, while there's very little to set up, this gives you feedback on basically every module that it's finding in the Drupal 6 site. That it's So it's already looked at my Drupal 6 site, had a look to see what's there, and it's going through that, that site and saying, there are all these things that I don't know what to do with. Um, so I think the summary up here was, um, and this doesn't sound too healthy in a sense, because it's saying that there's only 16 of the modules that in the Drupal 6 site that it knows what to do with and 36 it doesn't know what to do with. Um, it's not quite as bad as, as it sounds um, but certainly there are some missing areas that are still being worked on. Um, C tools for example, I haven't installed, while a lot of the functionality of C tools has moved into core there are still bits of C tools that are avail available as a contributed module um, but I don't think, I mean on this particular, this is a very simple site and it's probably not using anything in C tools that I care about. Um, you might have set some, some DevL stuff up in, with DevL Generate for example, you know, we don't care too much about that sort of stuff. Um, Google Analytics is an interesting one. This is actually an old, an old version of a Google Analytics library. Um, there are some newer versions, so again, you'd probably decide to trash that and use the, the newer versions of Google Analytics modules. Um, a lot of the image resizing stuff, oh, and look, we've got nasty old IMCE WYSIWYG, so we probably want to trash that and use the new Drupal 8 stuff anyway. Um, WYSIWYG, again, we don't need the, sorry, can you see what's on the screen there? We, we don't need the WYSIWYG module that we used to have in Drupal 6 because Drupal 8 does that out of the box. Um, it also, it, this module is actually so quiet in terms of what it's doing um, that it even hides away the things it can do. You know, it's kind of making a big noise about the things it can't do, but actually it, it, it hides away the things it can do. So um, it's, bringing, it's going to happily bring across block configuration, comments, if we had any um, content, including the, the fields, um, watchdog, database log, um, filters, you know, text filters. Um, it'll bring across the menu. Uh, it's an awful lot more than was, was handled in, in the Drupal 7 version of the Migrate module, which was primarily just data, just um, content. <coughs> uh, obviously bringing across all the nodes, all the paths, um, taxonomies, uh, it's fantastic really how much it is covering. So we'll say perform the upgrade. I've talked too long because actually the process itself is really incredibly quick. It's a very simple module with only a few settings but actually it's doing a huge amount under the bonnet. Five more minutes, okay. Is that including Q&A?
or whatever we're doing regularly. Okay, this will finish in, in the next few seconds. Um, spoiler alert, when we look at the, the site that's been created, um, unfortunately, at this stage, it doesn't look anything like the original site. We've done absolutely nothing in the way of bringing across um, the, the theme, for example. And to some extent, if you're upgrading from a Drupal 6 site to a, a Drupal 8 site, you almost certainly will be trashing the theme anyway because your Drupal 6 site was almost certainly not responsive and used ancient technologies that you, you don't really want to be using. So there's a fair chance you're going to have to rewrite um, or um, integrate with, with a new nice responsive theme, which is one of the big features of Drupal 8. Um, there's another little issue, which if we edit the home page, we have got content in here, but as you saw, there was absolutely nothing showing on the home page. Um, and the reason for that is somebody, somebody thought it was a good idea to put some PHP code in. So we had a PHP filter. And one of the things with this migrate module is that it really hates the PHP <coughs> filter for very good reasons. And it, it, it's one of the issues that um, is, is highlighted as a current issue that um, it will replace the PHP code filter with something called filter null, which simply doesn't bother displaying your content. So if you use PHP code, um, I'm led to believe it is possible to install PHP filter as a contributed module. Um, I haven't tried that. And if you do that, it should then sort of work if you really have to have PHP in your um, content. Not a good idea, really. Um, but Um, I believe the solution to this is you simply have to resave the content um, and it will drop that that filter null or possibly you have to um, take that filter null out of the image style. Um, we're running out of time, so I think I'm not going to have time to actually go through that with at this stage. Um, Let me just go back to my slides to finish off for the last few minutes. Sorry, this has been a bit rushed and not everything has worked quite as expected. Um, I, I put on these slides a whole heap of, was there anything? Uh, not, yeah, a whole heap of, of resources. So when I make the slides available, um, you, you may have done the obvious thing, which is to Google and found lots of useful stuff. But the other thing when you Google is you find lots of stuff which might have been useful two years ago, but actually things have changed a bit since then. I found some, some lovely how to build a module stuff on SitePoint, for example, but it's out of date. Some of the stuff is wrong and not very helpful. Um, Drupal 8.org slash 8 is, of course, the, the best place to look for everything as a starting point. Um, the api.drupal.org is now by default Drupal 8, um, but there's lots of great stuff on there. Um, and the other really useful place to look is um, on any particular contributed module, um, there um, should be a status message at the bottom saying whether or not it's been ported to Drupal 8, and if not, it attaches it to an issue where they will discuss what, what the outstanding issues, what things are that's holding it back, um, and, and should really tell you the status. Um, books is a bit of a, I mean, many of us, maybe books are old fashioned these days, but many of us learnt Drupal 6 and previous versions from Drupal 7, for previous versions with, with some good books, things like PACT books. Um, there's a lot of books in the pipeline but most of them at this stage haven't actually quite been published. Um, the, if, if I was going to flick down Amazon to just look at the sort of 
if you do a search on Drupal 8 books on Amazon, what you'll find is there's a couple of books that are available. The configuration management book is available. Um, but most of them say due for release. I mean, I know the, the main module development book um, said initially um, would, it would be released last December, but now it's saying it'll be released in about April, maybe May, something like that. So books should be a good resource once they're there, but most of the useful books aren't quite published yet and may not be published until at least June, some of them. Um, there's lots of good blogs around, too many to mention, though um, that, that link actually goes to the Acquia dev blog, which is pretty useful. Um, Drupal 8 theming guide is, is a lovely site that um, takes you through all the theming side of things. Um, it's not my area of expertise, but I think there's a, another talk later this weekend on Twig, which is, if you haven't been to a Twig talk, well worth going to. Um, there's lots of YouTube playlists put up by the Drupal Association. Um, in particular, Barcelona, I recommend simply because it's got so many videos, uh, Barcelona DrupalCon. Um, it's got so many videos and it's the most recent DrupalCon has been. Um, that's, um, I know there was a DrupalCon in Asia, but from what I've seen, there aren't many videos available from that quite yet. Um, some great video tutorials. Um, OS Training have had a scheme where they've been sponsored to create 200 free videos. Um, Drupal Eyes Me have got quite a lot. Um, and then there are a few, I mean, there, there are probably lots of sites out there with lists of really useful stuff. Um, my personal friends at Drupal Cafe, Nick sitting in front here runs Drupal Cafe, has, um, over a period of the last year or more has, has put together all the links you can ever find on Drupal 8. Um, and that's a great resource. Oh, my final point was simply going to be to say, um, while my experience on getting stuff into Drupal 8 has been quite limited, just this week I've started with um, Christian Aid on a contract, and last year they made the decision, they're porting from some nasty old ASP.NET system to, and they were porting to Drupal 7, but um, they haven't got very far with it, and actually since I've started this last week, we've made the decision to move to Drupal 8 instead, which I think is great news. Obviously, I get some more experience, um, but I think there's lots of really positive reasons why moving to Drupal 8 is the right solution, especially if you've got a development team who aren't very experienced in Drupal, which is the case with Christian Aid, um, because they're not wasting Drupal 7 experience. Um, I'm over time now. Great, we'd better get going then, so I'll just say thank you. Uh, I will make the slides available by one method or another later. Thanks very much.